Hey guys, this is uh, First Issue Club Podcast, and we are here on free, 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 free comic book day. Special episode for you guys. We're going to be recording a and talking about a couple of independent comic books because that is what free comic book day is all about. If you don't know what free comic book day is all about, get the, get excited. You guys excited? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Free Comic Book Day is that day where you get to discover new comic books. Bring a friend, bring a kid, do something, go into a comic book store and get free comics. And I'll tell you what right now, every comic book store you go into should give you some fucking free comics. Because they got loads of them, they ain't worth shit, and if they make you buy stuff to get those comic books, you tell them First Issue Club said they suck dick. I think we should specify, not every comic in the comic book shop is free on free comic book day. That's a good point. <laughs> <laughs> there could be a lot of issues on Saturday if you guys think that. You just get some shitty-ass free comics that you don't want, but you might read. You know what? You know who loves them? Kids. Kids. Kids, young readers. And it's good to take them to get them into reading and comics and all kinds of good stuff. Exactly. Our comic book store that we're going to is doing up-close magic, I was told. And they have cu- cupcakes. My comic book shop always does a food drive, and if you bring in more cans of food, you get more comic books, which is awesome. Really? Yeah. That's awesome. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. I had a coworker that got into uh, Miss Marvel last year. A kid got into Miss Marvel last year because of Free Comic Book Day. Really? It's a holiday, and you should celebrate it. So originally, it was brought back to help when comic book sales were just fucking abysmal, and they're not as much anymore. And they are somewhat credited to saving uh, comic books because it turns out when you do holidays, promotions, you get on social media and you invite people to do things in your store, you sell more shit. So now it's a heavily celebrated day and you should go do it and do that. And we're going to tell you about two independent books that we think you should pick up. And if they aren't there, go ahead and ask your comic book store to order them and place them on a pull list for you. We're going to be covering... Alien Toilet Monsters, number one, out on, what is their publisher even? I think it's, uh... Omniforic? Omniforic. Omnimorphic. 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 One more time. Omnimorphic. Omnimorphic. That's and then we're, we're covering uh, Coda, number one, out on Boom Studios. Hell yeah. Boom. <laughs> there you go. Thank Dude, you. Dude, I'm Boom. stoked for comics. <laughs> Hell yeah. I got a big heart on for comics. Fully so, torqued. Yep. <laughs> Who do we have in the club today? And if uh, you had a word that turned on your power, much like the famed superhero Shazam, what would your word that you yelled to make you superhuman be? I'm Mike DeStacy. I would yell, barf! (laughs) (laughs) And then would you barf? Yeah, I think I'd, like... Shoot vomit while I was yelling barf. Yeah, that's pretty good. I like that. Uh, my name is Greg Lickty, and I'm a Midwestern boy, born and raised. So my special award would be oop, <laughs> oop, oop. <laughs> like, like you're offended. Oop, like I'm, you know, trying to get through or trying to ask for someone's oh, attention. Oh, okay. yeah. Oop, 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 oop. Yeah, and I'd probably get like some. Overall, some coveralls would suddenly appear on me and a little <laughs> strand of hay out of my mouth, and I would. So you just get more redneck. That's your superpower. <laughs> yeah, my well, my superpower name would be Hayseed. All right, oh. that's cute. Yeah, you're a cute character. Mm-hmm. Thanks. <laughs> He's very pleased with himself now. <laughs> my name is Caitlin Morosic. Mine would be short like Greg's because it would just be help. <laughs> it would be like a rally cry. Ooh, I like that. Help. Help. Like help. Help, um, help, help, and then you turn into a fucking huge bear. Mm-hmm. It's me <laughs> helping me is what it really is. And I do turn into a bear. Flight kicks in before <laughs> <laughs> before the adrenaline. Help. Oh, yeah, there it the is. Shortest Ooh, then, little pep talk. Yeah. Here. <laughs> help. help. Mine, mine would be, come. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think anyone's surprised by that. <laughs> that what? Come. Okay, so but what's your superhero? Oh, I turn into a giant penis named Scrody. 
<laughs> and I walk on Wait, my balls. Wait, you're, you're, oh, okay. So you're you a penis have a with balls. So yeah. your yeah. balls are just the feet. I had a better one, but then I just started to troll Mike with mine. First up, we've got Alien Toilet Monsters, like we said, out on Omnimorphic. This is by Barnett and Zara. This book is super cool. The creators sent us an advanced copy so we could peek at it. And not only that, Greg, somebody, roll the gifts theme. Start singing the gifts song, because we got some gifts here. <gasps> what? Gifts, 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 I like free stuff, free stuff from other people. I haven't seen these yet, but it is time for gifts. Take one, pass them down. We got some. Oh my pins. god, that is bland. I can't believe you fucking waited for us. You've been the, have, that's so cool. Titular Whoa. alien toilet this monster. This is amazing. Oh yes, it's a throne. Porcelain throne with some savage teeth and some mean, mean throne. eyes. It is gold. Yes. Uh, I super love cool. It. God, this is so cool. <laughs> <laughs> so that just speaks to how awesome these creators are. They self published this book to begin with, sent us an advance copy because they'd heard of the podcast. Um, we wanted to like promote them, get them going. The book came out this week. Um, so we bought the comic book, even though we already had it. It's awesome. We love it. Um, so let's dive into this one. It's kind of hard to put words to how great this is. There's so, so much going on on it. Everyone's donning their pins right now. Um, but we've got... You and I kept ours in the packaging. We're hey, like, I'm keeping oh, this mint <laughs> <laughs> Uh So Alien Toilet Monsters, at its essence, I think we, we're, we're existing in a world where there's multiple dimensions... And there's some entertainment involved in the the various dimensions that exist in the world. We have we send out camera crews, and we get this great scene of like a dinosaur frog smashing with a scorpion fox, mm. and so like people are just like watching them fuck in a bar. Yeah, it's vivid. <laughs> <laughs> and it's supposed to be like maybe Animal Planet or Discovery Channel right. type of thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yes, and so the the lead narrative of this particular issue, which I don't know if these characters are going to transition into like the full-time leads of this book, or if they're just um, a means of kind of setting up what the world is. But we're Mm. in a bar, there's this... I would assume so because they're making vinyls characters of them. Yes, Yeah, there's particular ones that have characters. So we've got this bar owner who's like, kind of like a a skis, and his dead wife shows up as like a character from another, like, multiverse. Mm -hmm. And they're not supposed to be like vacationing and other, you know universes that exist and visiting other people they're involved with so like interdimensional police come after them we've got this great storyline with this internet troll who's <laughs> obsessed with this like soda franchise that's being made into a movie and there's this lead actress that just got that role she's my favorite yeah she's awesome and then lastly we've got one of these creatures that hops through a portal into the current universe, one of these, like, scorpion fox monsters. So a lot going on in this book. Uh, What did you guys think of it? (laughs) I honestly think this is one of the most polished comic books that I've read in a really long time. Yeah. Here's why. The Alien Toilet Monster, it looks fucking amazing, and it's on the cover. Right. And and I think that I can't wait until it happens. Mm -hmm. This whole book was setting up the world, and we don't even know how Alien Toilet Monsters are really going to enter it. Yeah. But it, it's it's a world, like, if they never even put Alien Toilet Monsters <laughs> into the comic book, I would still read this comic book. Yep. Mm-hmm. I love, uh, there's, like, fake ads for this, like, soda pop that's really popular in this world within the book. I don't even so. know how you pronounce it either. It's, like, got three W's, <laughs> doesn't it? Yeah, I think it does. The names in this were really, really great. Like, the characters that you mentioned have the best mafia like jersey like Mm -hmm. frankie and angel like it's just and they have this like side romance that's like tortured she's dead in one multiverse is that right 
Yes. Yeah. And then she mm-hmm. comes back into his life, but from a different verse. And it's just in in the midst of everything else happening, it's like that's one more thing where you're like, what, what, what drama, what? Totally. If if there were any other comic book that was like, we're gonna have multiverse, we're gonna have drama happen in a cafe. Um, we're gonna have time police. We're gonna have ener- an energy drink franchise with a fangirl about it, and then like have like you enter into her world, and she cares about this movie casting of it. All of that would be clunky as fuck, and it wouldn't be worth reading. This is like one of the most dialed in comic books that I have read in a really long time. I think if the the easiest way I can put this into like a sentence is that if you're a B-movie fan, this is, like, five of your favorite <laughs> B-movies, like, put into yeah, one, like, exactly. awesome thing. Yeah. Totally. I love that perspective. I would agree. So this comic book might be hard for you to get in your comic book store, but every comic book store, and this is the, in celebration of Free Comic Book Day, has the ability to order this, and you should order it, and then you should do what's called putting it on your pull list, where you just go ahead and say, I want every issue that's going to come out on this. Um, because it's going to be totally worth your time. Man, they have really doubled down on this book. They got, like, patches and pens Mm -hmm. and toys and... Well, that's the cool thing about it. I think that they developed, like, a decent fandom before... Just, like, going to cons and shit? Right, before they even, like, had a publisher and got distribution just from going to conventions, sharing this with, like, fans and things like that, getting it out online... Um, yeah, because you see, even at the back, they already have their comments and artwork sent to them. And cosplayed. By yeah. yeah. Yeah, totally. The, yeah, the fan art people send them is awesome. The splashback. I even like that name <laughs> for it. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so we're, we're just like so stoked to see where this one goes. And they're cool creators who are doing something awesome. And we always want to support that. <laughs> This is Coda number one by Simon Spurrier and Mattias Bergara. Simon Spurrier has written other things that we like. Um, he has a good Twitter account. You should follow him. Coda follows a character who is lover or love of his life has been captured by these people of which he cannot get them back. He's a scavenger. He has one leg. He is a good uh, battlesmith. All of that kind of stuff. Um, and, and that story alone, that he has to get his lover out of uh, some type of imprisonment, would be a really fun story to carry a story. This book is called Coda because it's set in the world of Coda, and it is high fantasy. High fantasy, well, we'll talk about what high fantasy is, but in this high fantasy world, the main character, who's I think referred to as hmm. Uh, rides a pentacorn, which, yes, is a unicorn with five horns. His pentacorn can ravage and tear the fuck up out of things. And I think it also curses aloud. It only curses, Yeah, I think. like only curses. It only it says, can speak, but it only curses. Right. Uh, and so in his and hmm's trip through the world, <laughs> he meets a mermaid-dealing uh, drug lord kind of person where he needs to get magical abilities. He gets... Um, essentially hired by a corrupt mayor. He is um, scavenging a giant, huge dragon that is dead but can also talk to him. He gets robbed at gunpoint. This is an epic fucking book, and for, I think, 4 or $5, you got yourself basically a graphic novel, so pick this fucker up. It is dense. There's a <laughs> lot going on here. Like you said, it's literally a graphic novel. Usually, novel. <laughs> Usually we talk about if you have, like, maps and codes that you're going into something with, you know you're getting, like, a full-on world-building book that's had a lot of thought put into it beforehand. And you get two maps in this one. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's not even just one. It's, it's very, very... This whole world has been meticulously crafted. I found myself looking at the map and being like, oh, now where did this story take place and where's the city that's in it? Yes. Um, There's so many cool places that they've already introduced. Like, I'm super intrigued by this city, the goings on there, the politics of it, and the, like, areas surrounding. There's all these weird creatures that you're meeting. The dragon thing at the beginning of the book, so awesome. Yes. Yeah. It's like a talking dead skeleton of a dragon. Yeah, that basically just calls people to it to like get creatures out of it. 
Yeah, I think he wants the rats <laughs> out of him. Yeah. But he also wants... But he can't move or anything. Like, his existence is kind of... Yeah. It's so stationary, there's, there's but, a little like, bit he's of, still... There's a little bit of a Mad Maxiness of this world, <laughs> yes. even though it's, like, very high fantasy uh, world. Yeah, it seems kind of like a desolate landscape, doesn't it? Mm-hmm. There's there There was a part of this book that took place in, like, a forest, so I'm guessing that there's hopefully going to be, like, a lot of, like, weird terrain in this. Since there's a mermaid, I don't know if there's, like, bodies of water. Or maybe there used to be bodies of water because she's just in, like, a, a big tub. jacuzzi. Well, <laughs> and they keep referencing something called the quench, right? Do we ever find out what the quench actually was? We don't know. But but this character, for that some reason... to do with water. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's a good point. Mm. I, didn't, I didn't realize you were saying that, the quench. Like, they had, like, sucked out all the water. Yeah, I'm not sure. Yeah. Because it does appear very deserty. So this character, Aaron. for some reason, and we don't know why, knows about the old world more than most people do. And he explains that. So the whole book, 40 pages, is narrated by his essentially love letter to um, his his person, I think lover. Is that an appropriate term? Is that what you call somebody it's you love? It's his wife. I think it's his wife. Oh, yeah. his wife. married. Yes. Okay, sorry. His wife. That's even sadder. Uh, that he's going to mail to and, and tell them. And in, in it, he's talking about the old world and how he knows all of these things. He's a, he's a really subtle badass, too. Yeah. I um, I kind of get the sense that these are all, like, people that we slowly get introduced to, including the main character, were, I want to I say, like, some kind of mercenaries or thieves. There's people that were, like, they have a common thread, in that they were part of maybe some goings on that people didn't really know about that were just living their lives and then this whole thing happened to the world and that's maybe why they have some skewed views and they have like connections with each other mm. that tie back i don't know i was really into it obviously because i'm drawing all these i really liked it too yeah and your brain does kind of like start to try to fill in blanks when something's like intriguing and so open like this story was it was kind of confusing that he was, like, trying to wrap his mind around this new world. But it also seemed like he knew the world super, super well, and everyone else did, too. Like, the world they're, they're existing in kind of seemed really established. Right. Mm-hmm. That's not a, too interesting of a point <laughs> to have no, a conversation I, I think it's, about. I but. think it's good. One, one thing that I like about him is he's kind of existing in this realm as if his wife had died. And he's now being like, what do I do now? And he's like, I'm going to be a good person that like tries to do mm-hmm. essentially good things. Yep. And so the, the I thought the ending of this book was actually like a really good cliffhanger that's like well, pretty crazy. Yeah. And he's got an opportunity to really do right by someone mm-hmm. or really mm-hmm. lean into doing wrong by someone with the predicament they've placed on him, which I think is a, an interesting direction there. I, I also like the... this climax of that story um, kind of focuses around this narrative of the world too where magical beings used to exist and they don't really anymore so magic is a resource now that is like has limited availability it is a commodity yeah exactly right which is an interesting thing to have like a world that magic exists but you have to like barter for it find it steal it um I I love that aspect of the story. Mm -hmm. If his pentacorn gets a separate story, I will read that. (laughs) Just (laughs) its own comic. (laughs) Pentacorn mini. Yeah. (laughs) Can you explain high fantasy? Yeah. So I don't know that I can, but if you're reading something that has a map to describe (laughs) it and they don't have technology, so they have, and they're ruled by some type of like monarchy or theocracy Mm -hmm. or, or things like that, like they like have some type of lordship, I think all of those things would be would make it high fantasy. I think high fantasy also, um, magic has rules. So, like, it, it has properties, and the world understands how, how they're, like, working and stuff like that. Um, and, yeah, I think that's... I think high fantasy is the same as to hard sci-fi, where hard sci-fi, like, you, you could say anything, but you have to be able to explain technologically, like, why it would happen. So it's in the future, it's another plane, or it's another verse, or things like that. Yeah. I, if you've ever read an L. Ron Hubbard book, uh, well, I'm not counting Dianetics, <laughs> but <laughs> I any, any of his, like, fantasy books, they are, like, 
you'll he'll he'll mention a word on a page that's like an alien word, and then he'll have a two page explanation of like that word's origin yeah. and like what it means and its meaning in another race and all these other Neil, crazy Neil, things. Neil Stevenson is the same way. Yeah, Snow Crash guy. So I, when I hear high fantasy, I think that like the crazy, crazy, dense world creation. Like you're even like I think like Lord of the Rings is probably like the father of like modern high fantasy. High fantasy. And, it's also like, and, but it's but it's becoming much more dense. I don't know that. I don't think people would look at the movies and call those high fantasy. They're right. They're more of like an adve- adventure movie. Yeah. Hell yeah, that was Coda. This is Coda, and uh, it's gonna be read it twice, but super fun for your what day is it? Free comic book day. Day. Yeah. Free, 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 free. <laughs> free comic book day. <laughs> <laughs> books. <laughs> books. 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 <laughs> And two things you should do on Free Comic Book Day. Grab a free comic book and slap anybody that's being pretentious. Because <laughs> it's about fun. <laughs> <laughs> that means your hand's going to hurt a lot. <laughs> um, that's it for this uh, quick mini Free Comic Book Day celebration. That's why we're here. That's why we're here. Comic books. Um, we got uh, Matt Hoda produces us. We have our music done by Primary Color Music. We are recorded in case you are studios, and we are part of the Fountain City Frequency family of podcasts. Um, here's my goodbye. <laughs> prickly, dickly, pickly pop. I love a prickly pop. What's a prickly pop? Well, it's a popsicle that has cactus uh things sticking out of it. Well, that doesn't sound like a great popsicle. It's not. It's more of a song. Okay. <laughs> uh, this is Greg Liktai. Uh Have a good uh, free comic book day. Pick up some comic books you don't think you would enjoy. Um, you might be pleasantly surprised. And support uh, artists and creators out there because it's very important. This is how they make their money. So uh, have a good day. Signing off. I am Caitlin Morosik, and I will show myself out. I'm Mike DeStacy, and I'm going to say what Greg was trying to say but was afraid to say, (laughs) which is get the fuck outside of your own box. (laughs) Like, step up for yourself and, like, expand your fucking horizons. Like, don't be such a little bitch all the time, okay? Especially on free comic book day. Yeah, I challenge most people to try to go to their comic book store naked. You ruined my bit. <laughs> I thought I was adding to it. Well, you thought. <laughs> Sometimes you could add something and it doesn't make it good. Yeah. It's a good point. No, <laughs> Maximalism is dead. It's supposed to be a monologue. <laughs> All right. Bye. Bye.